Hey, what's up guys? I'm Marco over here at Switch Suspension. Um, this is my 64 Impala. It's always been a dream of mine to have a 64 Impala on juice. No better way than to have, you know, switch suspension, hook it up. James and Jason are the best to do it. So they did a whole setup on my trunk. Jason fabbed it all up. Um, James did all the, the other hydraulic stuff. But yeah, I'm super stoked on how it came out. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. So today we're doing the hydraulics install on Marco's 64 Impala. I started this morning by just disassembling everything, um, get the springs, the shocks, all that out, along with the upper control arms. We're using a uh, one and a half inch extended reinforced uh, chrome arm for the top. Um, that'll allow him a little more lock up and be stronger. I cut the cylinder holes with the hole saw. I'm currently, I am assembling the uh, bushings and ball joints on the upper arms. This is an extended reinforced arm. You can see it's thicker um, than a factory. Um, you want to run this instead of stock just because it gives more strength to not buckle. Um, this car is just going to be strictly like a lay and play. So it's not really going to be hopping. But this extension gives you the ability to lift further um, without it slapping the frame. Um, also gives it that cool uh, wheel lean. Allows you to have the wheel run more straight up and down when you're at the taller lifting points. So that's what we're assembling now. Got our bushings and control shaft. Ball joint going in. Jason's gonna pause on the rack here momentarily and make some adjustments to the upper cups and then we're going to assemble the front end and be and be done with the front end for now uh, so yesterday i took care of some of the runnability issues on the car um, getting some stuff done here on marco's car just uh got the carburetor swapped out and some other little things just to make it run a little bit better and uh, today we're starting on the hydraulic install so got the frame mounts cut and attached to the frame uh, started building the battery racks These are going to be what holds all of the batteries and pumps and everything inside the trunk. So uh, it's going to be mounted. This will be mounted directly to the frame and then all of the rack for everything is going to be mounted through the floor to this plate. We want to do the, the nicest work we know how to do on Marcos because well, we kind of like him. <laughs> Those are all tacked together, squared up, and now I'll start, uh, actually start building the, the pieces that'll bolt down to the car to hold everything in. So, uh, moving along pretty good, and hopefully Marco's gonna like what we're doing. These are gonna get drilled and bolted to that plate that I tacked on the frame underneath, and that's what's actually gonna hold everything. So, be able then to weld these these racks will get welded onto those onto that the pump i'll put a leg off of here to hold the pump so everything will mount to that this will be bolted down to the frame nice and solid and it'll be strong but removable if necessary He decides he wants to do you know more pumps more batteries anything like that this can all unbolt and we can still use the same frame brackets and put a new different type of setup you know if he wants to do something real fancy that's on a bar that comes across the center like a full show setup 
we can still anchor to those outer right, right. plates. So it just, I don't know, it makes it more diverse, I think, makes it a little bit easier to change things. You know, God forbid it gets in an accident and needs any kind of work, you can take that stuff out right. and do the work to the, to the car and put it back in. Yeah. So, you know, anytime something can come out after you've put it in, it's, it's better than if it's welded solid. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> we can still put a cooler here. Uh-huh. Speakers up there. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can put your kids back here. Yeah. <laughs> My wife gets lippy. Throw her back here. Yep. What was that you said? <laughs> Why do you think I have a bench seat? So you I can... Have, I have two separate seats. <laughs> She's not so close to me. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the coils um, and then wait for Jason to finish up the front cups and then we'll put this back together. I just put a dab of Loctite on these. Sometimes they'll try to loosen up on you. Sometimes it's enough it'll jump up and hit the hood of the car. And now we are going to install the fittings. Yeah, this is basically what you're looking at here. This part's gonna brace against the inside of the car where the spring used to go. The new spring is gonna go from here to the lower unit or to the lower control arm. And then as this moves with the oil, that's gonna make the car either. So that's basically dropped down. And then that will extend when you hit the switch. These kind of jobs are always fun when the customer, regardless if you know them or not, if the customer is super excited about the job and about getting their car built. Yeah, it makes it a lot more fun. You know, the work we do is sometimes pretty hard. You know, a lot of a lot of sweating, a lot of, you know, bleeding sometimes. So when you got a customer that really appreciates the work you're putting in, yeah, it makes it a little nicer, so. Okay, so, so it could go forward. Um, with this being carpeted, you do get sparks from that end. Right. Occasionally, so if that was all the yeah, way Yeah, if it was up, too close over. I mean, if we think this is a good location, I'll just mark this and yeah, this battery it's... rack's gonna go even with the front of the, the bolt down bar and then I'll mark where this is gonna sit on this bar and. Yeah, I think that. Do you like the that? The trunk will clear. Yeah, the trunk clears no it. No problem. Something like that probably be okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we got a couple inches between. We'll have to make this battery cable will be a little bit odd because it'll back yeah. to that doing this at least till I'll come back. We figured just after lunch is when we're gonna like slow down so that Marco can't have his car for the weekend. I was gonna work strong all the way till Friday morning and then just kinda just, kinda just ease out of it and, and just let it sit for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to drive him insane. <laughs> I'm just joining these solenoids up for, so Jason can mount them. So three solenoids in a bank per, per pump. to connect them together. Three days later. We're gonna be putting together the, the rest of the pump. The gear's already assembled in the tank with the motor and the block. So this portion is done. We're gonna work on the check valves, dumps, and the slowdown, along with the return hoses. And that will finish up the pump. So 
these are check valves here. Let's the fluid go one way, but not the other. That's what keeps the car up in the air once it's lifted. There's four total in the car, one for each, one for each wheel. Yeah, so the one's gonna be a power, one's gonna be a ground. That's gonna go to your switch. That's when you hit the switch up, it goes through those solenoids, which once we have everything mounted, we'll go over that, but it energizes the solenoids, spins the engine, spins the motor, which lifts the car. Then this wire here, when you hit it, this lets the oil back out and drops the car. And this is a very basic setup. Right, right. Um, the guys that get into the uh, like the professional hoppers and sorts to the casual observer it doesn't seem like there's much going on there but there's a lot of science in it um, a lot of experience and these are the return lines so what happens when you hit your switch to lift the car the solenoids engage engine the motor runs turns the gear in here this is filled with oil pushes the oil through here, out through here to your two hoses. So if this is the front, it goes to the left and right. Then when you're ready to drop the car, these energize, lets the oil out here, returns it through the slowdown back into the tank. So it has two pumps. It has one for the front, one for the rear. When you go to four, um, now you have a pump for each wheel. So each wheel can move you can do more things. Um, th this car here, basically, it can lift all four corners, not individually though. It can lift the front, drop the rear, okay. or lift the front, lift the rear. Depending on how we wire up the dumps, it can drop you know, the, the front, the rear, the sides. Uh -huh. That's about it on this type of setup. If you wanna go into being able to like do what they call a power three wheel, where the car can actually lift up into three wheels, then you need three or four pumps, depending on how you want to do that. It allows more options of things that you can do. Now, there are some setups out there that use like a single pump and eight of these that can do the same thing um, just by directing the fluid. Um, it just really comes down to what you're doing with it. We'll be getting them in the vehicle tomorrow. The racks are all done. Um, we'll start making battery cables. Jason is finishing, he's going to do the rear arms and uh, some wiring and some battery cables and we should be able to see it work. Like, hey James, you should use these. And he was like, no, no, man, those will never work. I don't think I exactly and said them like that. And then he used them and he was like, yeah, man, see, these are the best thing ever. These short ones are going to connect the batteries together. So we have four batteries. We're going to connect the batteries together for the front pump to run 48 volts. And then I believe we're going to use two or three. So we'll either go 24 or 36 volts for the rear, just to be a little bit slower. Yeah, I gotta plate the bottom, but the power ball's in. That's it. And they set down in that piece on the arm and that bolts on holds it in. Do we want to then make a hole right there in that to connect the 
because that's a pretty good ground through the bottom, right? You got the three be, half yeah. inch bolts. And then this one can be, so we can just loop them out like right here into that. Or do you want to through bolt into this one and run it over and have it come out of that one and be right here? Yeah, why don't we through bolt to that one and put the ground like here or here. Because then this will be the positive cable. cable for the front pump. Yeah, because right. if we do that, we can. this can be clean flat. If Because if it comes out of here, it's just going to be a loop. Right, then we'll just have to connect those so then big... we'll have another cable here that connects that side of the battery. That'll be the ground, this will be the power. This is 48, this is 36. That's 24, 24, that's 12. Yeah. So we might just pull 24 for the for the rear pump and just see how it is. You can always make another cable. That's pretty convenient. The main reason the hopper guys don't do this is because when they catch on fire, you don't want to open the trunk. Yeah. It's not as <clears throat> quick, but you can still hit the trunk with your key and right. grab it real quick. So the front pump will have all four batteries powering it. Okay. The rear one will only have two. two. But the guys with 16 batteries i mean you do the math 16 yeah. times 12. Right, right. that's <laughs> high voltage so you don't want you don't want to be in that trunk no, when it catches sure. fire so pretty much we've got the uh, the main part of the setup all done now uh, batteries are in pumps are in place uh, hydraulic lines are run everything's primed today just focusing on getting all the little details done i'm getting the pumps bolted down permanently and james is going to be taking over uh finishing up the wiring doing all the switches uh unless there's some major screw up today we should have this thing all done by the end of before the end of the day So where we're at on the 64 is we're basically just buttoning up a couple little things. Um, we're down to putting in the switch panel and then wiring it up. I got to move. There's a choke cable we don't need anymore and a vent pull lever. We're going to make a little room so that we can put that switch plate on the left hand side here. He's probably going to have to go with it on this left side somewhere because he's got this factory AC unit here. And so basically when we clear out this spot, you're going to end up with something like you know, right in this area. Just double checking where everything's at, making sure we've got the wires connected to the right places. We're gonna put a couple wires on these solenoids and then we're gonna jump it make it lift up so originally um, Marco and I you know I was kind of Marco wanted to learn about the stuff so we were putting them together at our lunch that you know before this became a company's project so basically what had happened is when i was showing him how to put the gear on the block and build the pump uh we failed to remove the plastic shipping plugs that go in there so that's why when we hit it wing and it gave that and it didn't have a sound just because it was plugged and couldn't pick up oil do you guys set this in here to say this is the problem with hydraulics you know quick fix pull the pump out pull the gear out pull the plastic off um, everything's good to go. Everything's functioning the way it should. The stance is pretty good. So basically at this point, all we have to do is run back our switch wire and tidy this stuff up and uh, it's a done deal.
just got to do the test ride on the Impala. Jason and James killed it. It's always been a dream of mine, of course, to uh, own a 64 Impala. Uh, I grew up, you know, with my uncles. Uh, I grew up with my uncles um, just building lowriders and stuff like that. I've never got a chance to own one with hydraulics or anything, but this is my dream and it finally came true. And thanks to the guys. Yeah, so Luna's all set. This is Luna right here. So look out for her in the street. We're gonna be cruising soon.